folks, I'm Natasha and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my booktube channel. Today's video is going to be my wrap-up from Booktubeathon 2017. I'm going to go more in detail about all the books that I read, give you guys some stats, some numbers, as well as talk about the books a little bit more in depth than I would in my monthly wrap-up, which is coming up soon. I have like 24 three, 24 books that I read this month and so at the very least I get to talk about these eight in more detail. When you're doing that many books all at once it gets a little cray. So this was my very first time participating in Booktubeathon and I actually did better than I thought I would. I completed all of the book challenges. I did five out of the seven video challenges and I did six out of the seven Instagram challenges. So that equals out, if you were to sort of do the math, which I like to do, um, there were in total sort of 21 challenges and I did 18, uh, which is pretty good. I also had a video up every day except for one, so I did vlogs for six days out of the seven. <laughs> so, so I do have numbers. Um, I read a total of eight books this week, which equals out to 1,946 pages which divide that by seven, I read 278 pages each day, which is above average for me. Typically, I read 210 pages a day based on my other monthly stats. So I did a little bit better this book to a thon, which was my goal. I wanted to read more. So the book challenges were to read a book with a person on the cover. For that book, I read To All the Boys I Loved Before. This was the first book that I read in the week and I gave this one three stars. So this follows the story of a teenage girl named Laura Jean and she writes love letters to all the boys that she's loved, but she's never sent the love letters out. So then through a little bit of drama, the love letters do get out and sent to these boys and she's kind of dealing with the aftermath of that and sort of finding out who she likes, who likes her. I thought this was cute, like I liked it, but I didn't find it too emotionally gripping in any way. It was just sort of a fun, light read. I read it. I didn't think too much about it. I knew going into it that it was part of like a three book series. And the only reason why I really want to continue with the series is because it's it's easy to read, but then I'm also curious who she sort of ends up with. Uh, lately, I've been annotating books. I didn't actually annotate really anything in this because there wasn't any one paragraph or one section of the book that was, like I said earlier, particularly gripping to me. And I wasn't really mad at it in any way. It was just sort of an average book to me, so I gave this one three stars. Up next, I read The Human. So this was my challenge to read a book uh, based on the cover, and I got this solely because of the cover and you can see I mark this up a little bit. So this book is told from the narration of an alien who has been sent to earth to kill a professor who has figured out a like monumental mathematical equation that basically like solves the riddle of the universe and so he's sent to earth to kill him and then he takes over his form he learns about humans, he learns about love, and um, it's really, really excellent. And I've mentioned that this is probably my favorite book that I read through Booktubeathon, although I have three five-star books this week, so I'll get into those. But um, I love this, and I highly suggest this to anyone, really. I think it's fantastic. So I'm going to read another sentence here that I really like that sort of shows the sarcasm and sort of funniness of this book. So it's between two people. It says, are you scared of death? She looked awkward. Of course, I'm scared of death. I'm a lapsed Catholic. Death and guilt, that's all I have. Catholicism, I discovered, was a type of Christianity for humans who like gold leaf, Latin, and guilt. Um, I marked that off because I thought that was really funny. This was by far a five-star book for me. I loved the writing. I loved the characters. I loved the development and like the perspective and you kind of have to suspend your belief a little bit in terms of like the mathematical um, equation part of it, but if you're into aliens at all and you like the idea of aliens, I highly, highly suggest this book. It was awesome. I read Chasing Jupiter. This was the book that I chose to read in a day, which I did. Also had a person on the cover and I also bought it because of the cover. So really this one checked out about three different challenges, I guess. This book is set in 1969 and the girl has a brother who um, has autism. I talked about this a little bit again in my vlogs. Um, having it set in 1969, they don't really know what's sort of wrong with her, with her brother. And then he has an accident. It talks about a lot about family and um, there's a cute sort of romance in it, but it wasn't anything too great. Like it was just okay. And so I gave this one three stars. 
Um, up next I read This Song Will Save Your Life. Uh, this was the book that I picked for Read a Hyped Book because I wouldn't have known about this book if it wasn't for booktube and so I felt like it was kind of hyped in my mind. Um, I gave this one four stars because this one made me feel a certain way. This talks about a 15 year old girl, 15, 16 year old girl who is trying to be cool in high school. So trigger warning this does have a little bit of a talk about suicide in the beginning which it was like second chapter boom suicide like it was it hit you. So from that she ends up discovering a underground like secret club with a bunch of older girls and an older DJ guy that she ends up having a crush on. Um, this book hit me in certain ways because I think I mentioned I was 19 and had a crush on an older guy who was a DJ um, in university. A lot of the passages, I noted some stuff in here, a lot of the passages hit home to me because it was sort of the exact feelings that I had at the time. Um, I'm gonna read to you guys just a, again just a few of them. So it says, it wasn't because we got drunk as the night went on. I didn't drink at all and sure I didn't drink much because as you pointed out this is my job. You can't get wasted at your job. It wasn't an effect of alcohol, it was more like we got drunk on the night. Um, I really like that because again I know that feeling. I was not a person in university who often drank a lot and again I kind of knew the DJ and he wasn't drinking a lot but it's just that feeling of being in the moment and just kind of drunk on the whole experience that that was one of the reasons why I went out and I partied as much as I did. I never really got drunk on alcohol, I got drunk on the experience and drunk on like the whole event and so that kind of hit me and then literally a couple pages later he asked her like hey can you take over the DJ equipment and so he says, can you take over the deck so that I can deal with this other character, he asked me. And she's, she nodded mutely, he turned away again, Char, I blurted out, am I going over to your place later tonight? I sensed instantly, staring at Char's half-turned shoulder, that I had broken into yet another unspoken rule to ask for what I wanted. Again, when I was sort of hanging out with this older DJ guy, it was all meant to be kept sort of secret because he was sort of seeing other girls at the time. I was kind of like, okay, it seems acceptable to like not tell anyone that we're hooking up. Um, so yeah, this kind of made me feel some certain feels because that part of my life really pissed me the fuck off now that I'm older. So this was just kind of like having flashbacks to like my young dumb self, basically. Um, I have the tendency to, when I have crushes on people to like build them up on this pedestal like they're like a godlike figure uh, which I feel which, which I kind of got from how she felt about that one guy in this book and seeing her sort of break down that godlike figure I also connected with that I was like yes and I love this I gave this four stars on Goodreads it wasn't a perfect book for me I didn't like the way the ending sort of wrapped up but it was definitely a four star book Maybe upon reread it might be bumped up higher, but right now as it stands it's a four star book for me. So the next book I read was the graphic novel Snot Girl, which you guys know I cosplayed before I had even read the book for one of the Instagram challenges and video challenges as well. I was sort of panicking halfway through the week and I was like, oh, I need to read a book outside and I wasn't going to be one of the ones that was on my original TBR. And so I picked this up and I read this outside sort of in the car and it's not necessarily like the best story. It was just kind of a light fun story with a amazing artwork which is exactly what I needed at the time. Like hello I have green hair I have to buy this and the artwork is just absolutely stunning. It's beautiful and I mentioned as well that I want to get more um more editions of this that they have because I want to collect all the covers. So for the actual story itself you're not getting too much from volume one. Um you're not really finding out what's going on until about the last couple pages and you're like okay something something's happening here and so I'm really excited to see how it goes uh, and where they take it and so I gave this one a four stars in actuality it was probably more like a 3.5 just because it wasn't a perfect story to me but the artwork and sort of I guess my emotional tie to it kind of bumped it up to a four so up next for book number six I read the gigantic beard that was evil um, again I was just sort of panicking wanted to read some graphic novels to hopefully read seven books in a week pick this up from my library I have to take this back love the artwork style in this I have not seen a graphic novel to my knowledge that's done in pencil. I haven't seen a style like that but it was it's just it's really cute. So I gave this one four stars because when I first read it I kind of rushed through it and I sort of just absorbed all of the art and the story um, but I didn't really think too much sort of of the meaning behind this and then I had a little bit of time to think and I'm like oh okay this actually says a lot about 
various worldly issues. Um, I can't pinpoint one specifically, um, so it's almost like a fairy tale where you really got to look deeper to get something out of it. And I wasn't in the mood at the time when I read this to look deeper, but I almost want to reread this before I send it back to the library just so that I can get some of the deeper um, hidden meanings behind it. The basic synopsis of this is there's a man who lives like a pretty normal everyday life on a place called here and they're surrounded by a sort of sea and then what is they what they call there and so he ends up growing this crazy giant beard and he's kind of an outcast and people stare at him and they sort of upset the norm of the way that they live here and then he gets sort of sent away to there. Um, that's just the best way to put it. You have to read it to really find that out. And so to me, I think it just talks about like inclusiveness and modern society sort of shunning things that aren't normal or clean or I don't know. There's deeper shit in this that I, I wish I was intelligent enough right now to talk about, but I didn't really take notes on it because it was a library book and I read it so quickly, like I said, that I, I, I want to reread this again because it was, it was fast for me to read, but I want to like pick it apart. But I gave it four stars based on the illustration and I love the way that it was told in almost like a lyrical, poetic sense. Some of it was very poetic and it rhymed. Um, I liked it. I really, really liked it. So I gave this one four stars, but I want to reread this like immediately so I can get like a deeper sense of what's going on and like really nitpick it. So then as my seventh book for the week, I read The Smell of Other People's Houses. Oh, this was a five star book for me. Um, I was so excited to read this and really I bought this because of the cover. It was a hyped book for me and just one that I was most excited to read. And this was just so fantastic. I don't even know really how to describe it. So this is set in the 60s, I think 70s in Alaska. So it has a couple different narratives and it follows the stories of a couple different teenagers and sort of how they all get wrapped together at the end. And there's so many just amazing moments in this and the writing was just so, so good. So they're just telling a simple story of these kids from simple towns, but there's more to it than that. Um, some of them have family issues with not so great parents. Other ones have sort of family secrets that you don't really know about. There's a lot of amazing narratives about Alaska itself and a lot of fishing culture. And oh, it was just fantastic. It was just so excellently told. Beautiful. And I marked this up too because there's a couple things in this that I like. So I'm going to find you one that I like. This book is so descriptive and for a little book you just get so much imagery and sense. Like you really, it does focus a lot on the smell of things. Um, and so this is one of the favorite things that I picked up. It's in the beginning of the book so it's not too much of a spoiler or anything like that. This is talking about a boy that she's going to and his house um, smells like cedar. So it says, he knew how to French kiss, which tasted like a forest of promises once I got used to it. Because I was Catholic and smelled stiff instead of wild, he promised not to do anything but touch me lightly and only in certain places where the smell wouldn't give me away when I went back to my own house, which held nothing but the faint scent of mold and secondhand furniture, also known as guilt and sin. Whew. It's good. It's good. It's a good book, guys. Okay. It's, it's really, truly beautiful. And then this is another sort of beautiful thing that I loved in it. It makes me cry. It's so well written and almost like is emotional. So this is another one that I liked. Again, just beautiful passages in this. It says, it's too hard to keep track of brothers who are full of their own ideas. They're like helium balloons. At some point, you just have to let go of the string and say, go on then. Goodbye. Safe travels. Which has got to be easier than wondering if you're going to hold on too tight and pop the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, this is absolutely amazing and I have a feeling it's probably going to be one of my top books that I've read this year. Um, I'm going to suggest this to everybody. Everyone should read it. It's just, it's such an excellently told uh, story and it's just, it's beautiful. It's written beautiful. I'm surprised that this is a debut novel from this author, like super surprised. And I'll definitely be looking out for more of her stuff because this is just fantastic. So this was an instant five stars for me. There's nothing that I would have changed in it. And then lastly, I finished another book from my original TBR. Um, this is the book that I picked for a character very different from me. This follows a girl named Kristen who comes to find out through um, dating her boyfriend and sort of being sexually active that she is uh, intersex. I've never had to deal with like a major diagnosis like that or sort of like the question of uh, gender and sexuality and gender identity. Um, this was really fucking fantastic to the point that like it was so good I only annotated one part of it because everything in it was just fantastic. The writing is just clean and the narrative is 
great. Um, there was um, some points in this that like hit me so hard emotionally that like I literally had to stop the book and go, oh shit, because of some situations that happened to her. Um, all of her school finds out about this and it's just horrific. <laughs> you know, she tries to deal with it in certain ways and ends up in horrific situations. It was just, it was hard to read but important to read and captivating to read. So justice to anybody who is curious and wants to know a little bit more about what being intersex is and what it means and um, I was sad to see, I was sad to hear that this wasn't an own voices novel but the author um, is a surgeon who has sort of dealt directly with intersex teenagers and so it's not like a completely made up narrative um, but it was just, I wish this was own voices because it was told so great that I really made me believe that it was. Um, one thing that I can say I loved about this was the support from her family. She's getting no support from her school, she's getting no support from like anyone else in her life but her dad in this story was just like my bae, like so supportive. It made me cry because it was just, it was really, really, really well written. There is my one annotation in this, so I am going to read you guys that. It really has nothing to do with the story. <laughs> so she gets her diagnosis and in talking to a doctor, and that's not a spoiler, it's right in the sort of insert that she gets a diagnosis. She says, everything changed, I insisted, even though I kept telling my friends and all the others that I was the same, everything was different. Dr. Laforte shook her head and said, the world around you may have shifted, seen you in a different light, but the Mona Lisa is a masterpiece, whether it's in a pitch black room, under a strobe light, or in the sun. Makes me cry, I don't know why. You know, just that line, like, the Mona Lisa is still a masterpiece, whether it's in the dark. And it's just, it all comes down to like, who you are inside is still who you are, despite how other people see you. Um, yeah, made me cry, like, hello. So <laughs> yeah, this is a definite five star book for me. It was great, and now I'm crying. Well, I keep a roll of tissue paper right here. So I can talk about books and cry about them. I got nice makeup on today too, damn it. So overall, I picked some absolutely fantastic books for this readathon, and I managed to read eight books in seven days, which was more than I thought I could. Um, there was only one book that I didn't read from my original TBR, which was a book by Patrick Ness. It was The Rest of Us Just Live Here. I didn't end up reading that, but I did end up reading those two graphic novels, which sort of flushed out the week and kind of pushed me up to seven books. So. Um, let me know definitely in the comments how your booktubeathon was. Were you successful? I loved watching people's vlogs. I'm hoping to watch people's wrap-ups now because I love them. But yeah, definitely let me know how you feel about any of these books. Are you interested in reading any of them? And I don't know, just have a conversation and down below. I love having conversations and talking about books, so please leave any comments down below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. But I hope everyone is doing good and until my next video, I will talk to all you soon.